Hello students, this is a quick maths video about outlier fence test. I'm going to talk to you briefly about how to make a box diagram, a box and whisker diagram, or a box plot. They're all the same thing. And then I'm going to teach you how to find outliers using that outlier fence test. You can see in both of these box and whisker diagrams or box plots that there are um, asterisks above or circles below. It doesn't matter what symbol you use, most of the time you use asterisks, but these represent values that are well outside of the uh, typical range of values for each of these box and whisker diagrams, so we call them outliers. How do you calculate it? Don't worry, I'm going to show you right now. And the best way that I can motivate that is with an example. Uh, let's say I gave a Unit 5 exam and I got these scores. Let me make these scores a little bigger. And I wanted to determine if there were any outliers in the data. What I could do is take these data, right, that's right, data is plural, and then put them into the calculator. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. First, I'll pop on my calculator here. In order to put the information, the data, into the calculator, I'm going to press Stat and then go to the Edit screen. Then I can put all of the data, this is univariate data, only on one variable, the variable being test score, uh, into L1, list 1. I'm just going to put it in uh, by pressing the uh, numbers and pressing Enter. And then uh, after a couple of minutes, I'll have them all done for you. All right, now all the data is in there. Incidentally, if I look at the last data value, it tells me that there are 17 values in the data set. That's interesting uh, information and good to know. Now what I'm going to do is try to figure out some summary statistics, namely the five number summary. Once I get that five number summary, I can start making my box and whisker diagram. So I'm going to go to stat again. Then I'm going to go to calc because I'm going to calculate something about them. I'm going to calculate the one bar stats, which tells you a lot of things about the data set. For example, it gives you the X bar, which is the sample mean. It gives you some standard deviations here. It gives you that N, the number of data values is 17. The minimum, the quartile one, the median, the quartile three, and then the maximum, which are called the five number summary. So I can pull all of this information, the five number summary, and put it onto my paper here. That's what I have here, the minimum, quartile one, the median, quartile three, and the maximum. I'm gonna use those to cook up a box diagram, a box plot, or a box and whisker diagram. They're all the same thing. However, before we use this five number summary to make a box and whisker diagram, what we're going to do is the objective of the video, which is to do the outlier fence test. Outlier fence test goes like this. The outlier fence test answers the question, what is the largest value and the smallest value that should be in the data set? Uh, we're looking at where the data should lie. And then if there's a data value that lies either above or below that, that value would be considered an outlier. Here's how to figure it out. The lower fence, or in other words, the smallest value that should be in the data set is quartile one, whatever the value of quartile one happens to be, minus one and a half times the IQR. IQR is a value that is uh, otherwise known as the interquartile range. I'll show you to get that in a moment. And then the upper fence is simply quartile three, whatever the quartile three happens to be, plus 1.5 times the IQR. Now let's talk about what the IQR actually is. This IQR stands for the interquartile range. In other words, the range in between the two quartiles. Uh, it's the middle 50% if you want to think about it like that. So the IQR is equal to quartile 3 minus quartile 1. It's just another calculation that you have to do. Uh, in fact, you could actually write out the formula as Q1 minus 1.5 parentheses Q3 minus Q1, and similarly for the upper fence, but we don't like to do that. All right, so let's see it in action. First, let's figure out the IQR for this situation. 89.5 is quartile 3, 79.5 is quartile 1. That makes it nice and easy to figure out. The interquartile range is that minus that, which is just 10. Now we know what to substitute in to our lower fence and upper fence calculations. I'm going to rewrite the formulas for the lower fence and the upper fence. Then I'm going to start substituting quartile one being 79 and a half, quartile three being 89 and a half, and IQR being 10 for both cases. Completing this calculation gets me the lower fence of 64.5. Now let's do the upper fence. I substitute and solve and I get 104.5 as our upper fence. Now that's going to tell us where the largest value and the smallest value uh, should be in the data sets. In other words, there should be no values below 64.5 and there should be no values above 104.5. Let's take a look at what that looks like on the line graph. This tells us that there should be no values, as I said, below 64 and a half and no values above 104.5. Sometimes we try to visualize that as a series of brackets or fences. In other words, when I graph my data here, there should be nothing below this line, which is at 64 and a half and nothing above this line, which is at 104 and a half. Now that I'm looking at my lower fence, I notice that there are a couple of values that are below the lower fence, namely 60 and 63. Both of these values are below that lower fence, which means they are outliers. They are called low outliers. There's no values that are above 104.5, which makes sense because these are test scores. So 98 
is going to be within my upper fence, so there are no uh, higher outliers, but there are two lower outliers. So I'm gonna do two things. First, I'm going to identify the two outliers, or however many outliers there happen to be, and put them onto the graph as asterisks. Then I'm going to change my minimum so that it's 78. It's no longer 60 because that's an outlier. It's not an acceptable minimum. So my new minimum is 78. Notice I didn't recalculate anything here. I just went to the uh, number that is within the lower fence, but also the lowest number in the list. Now what I can do is start making my box and whisker diagram. I remove my lower fence and upper fence from the diagram and then write down five vertical lines, which correspond to the five number summary, keeping in mind that this 78 is my new minimum, so I marked it in blue, whereas the other ones will be, are the original five number summary, which I've marked in red. I connect together the two lowest and the two highest vertical lines with a straight horizontal line. Those are my whiskers, and I connect the three middle lines with a horizontal line on top and horizontal line on the bottom. This is the box. So here we have a box and whisker diagram with the outliers clearly labeled as asterisks on one side. If there happen to be upper outliers, higher outliers, they would also be over here as asterisks as well. Here are a couple of little stylistic touches. I like to label the minimum quartile one, the median quartile three, and the maximum with the numbers, especially when they're not exactly on the lines. And I also like to write out what the outliers are just in case uh, it's ambiguous as to what values these are. All right. This was a quick maths tutorial on the outlier fence test, and you also got a little bonus about box and whisker diagrams and a siren in the background. All right, folks, good luck studying.